In this video, we're going to be painting up Russian Napoleonic Cuirassier and Hussars. It will be a total of 24 cavalry units in a big batch paint. I first start out by priming everything black. I make sure that I hit all the models from every angle, above, below, all the way around, cover everything in black as completely as possible. I am next going to zenithal highlight all the models with white primer. What this means is I will be spraying each model from a 30 to 45 degree angle all the way around to give it a lighter tone up on top and dark black shadow at the bottom. For the horses, I'm only going to use these four Army Painter Speed Paints. Using a broad brush and picking my first color, Dark Oak, I go ahead and paint two to three horses in this color. I continuously go from one horse to the next until I have two or three of them painted. After batch painting those few horses, I switch to leather brown and I work on another two to three horses. I also take this opportunity to paint some of the Lance staffs with this color as well. After that, I continue in the same fashion with Grey Floor Grey and Grim Black. Notice that I do not paint the tail or the mane in front of the horse. The reason for that will be coming up shortly. Here's a quick tip. White horses, you do not have to paint. They are already zenithal highlighted white. For the tails and manes, I switch to a brush with a pointed tip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the exact same four colors and I'm going to apply it randomly to all the different horses. The ones that have, for instance, a gray color, I would put something like brown on it like I'm showing here. And then also I would just vary it down the line and do something random the next time. For instance, I would put maybe a gray mane and gray tail on a black horse or a black tail and a black mane on a brown horse and so on and so forth. With just four colors, I'm able to fully randomize all the horses and make them all look different. I now move to Crusader skin for the riders and I'm going to do what I'm calling common base coats, which means between the Cuirassier and the Hussars, they have the same colors for these specific areas. For the Cuirassier, they have gloves, so I only put this Crusader skin on their faces. For the Hussars, I will put it on the faces as well as their hands for most of the riders. Next, I use Grey Flood Grey, which is the same color that I used on the horses, and I apply it onto the bed rolls. There are bed rolls on the rear of the rider on both the Cuirassier and Hussars, and also in the front, they would have bed rolls as well. The Cuirassier have a little bit more of an exposed front bed roll, and the Hussars, at least on these Perry miniatures, have bed rolls that are hidden underneath the saddlecloth. I next use hardened leather and this goes on the various pouches and bags that you would find around the riders. Of course this varies from company to company from Perry's to Warlord Games to Victrix so paint them as you see them. I also use this hardened leather on any of the sword sheets. Next with all the colors that are already on my palette like grim black, dark oak and hardened leather I go ahead and paint it onto all the moustaches and the hair of all the riders and I vary them from rider to rider and I always make sure that I do the moustache and then turn around and immediately do the back of their heads just so that the hair color matches from front to back. Next, I use gunmetal metallic paint and with a broad brush, I apply it onto all the swords and the lance heads that I come across on all the models. For the cuirassier, with a smaller brush, I carefully apply it onto all the breastplates on the riders. I am careful not to apply it onto any of the straps or anything else, just onto the breastplates. I next use Weapon Bronze, which is a common base coat for the trumpets for both the cuirassier and the hussars. Mm -hmm. 
I next switched to Greedy Gold, which is a much brighter color, and I put it onto the top of the flagstaffs for the cuirassier. And this also goes on all the hilts and pommels of the swords, including the ones that are sheathed, especially for the trumpeters and the lancers. And I also apply this color onto the bottom of the sword sheaths as well. Now I switch to a finer detailing brush and I apply this greedy gold onto all the chin scales on all the cuirassier. For the hussars, I only put it on the chin scales of the leader and the trumpeteer. The rest of the models, I will be giving leather straps. For the cuirassier, I'm going to be putting greedy gold onto the front plates of the helmets. I now switch to matte black acrylic paint, and I'm going to be applying this onto all the bridles of the horses. This is fairly time consuming, so take your time and work through all of them. Here's another tip, horses that were painted in grim black, you don't have to paint their bridles, they're already black. Next, using leather brown acrylic paint, I applied this onto all the hooves of the horses. For horses that were painted hard in leather, they're already brown, so you don't have to paint your hooves. And with that, you're done with the biggest bulk of your work, which are the colors for the horses and the common base coats. Now we will look at specific sections for the cuirassier and hussars. For the cuirassier, I'm going to be following this color scheme, which should be for the Glokov regiment. For their khaki colored pants, I'm going to use palette bone speed paint. This will give the pants a brownish appearance, but in a lighter tone. Next is grim black speed paint. This goes on the helmets, onto the boots, the stirrups, and also the ammo pouches on the back of the riders. This is the Glukov Regiment, which calls for a mid blue accent color. And for this, I'm going to use High Lord Blue from Army Painter. And this is going to be going on the collars and also onto the saddle cloth. On this Perry Miniatures model, the musician doesn't have a breastplate, so I paint his upper tunic in this High Lord Blue color as well. I am careful not to touch the white straps as well as all the markings along the arms of the musician. Next, I use some greedy gold and I pick up some of the accent pieces on the front of the breastplate. I then use some hardened leather speed paint for this portion of the saddle. For the trim on the saddle cloth, I use demonic yellow acrylic paint. With a fine tipped brush, I go ahead and apply it all the way around the periphery of the saddle cloth. To give the breastplate its signature darker look, I use dark tone from Army Painter and this wash I carefully apply to only the breastplate. I make sure that I work my way around any of the gold parts and especially the straps, which I will leave white in color. Next, I switch to strong tone wash and this goes on all the swords as well as anything that is painted gold. For the white buttons on the pants, I use matte white, and hey, it's not Napoleonics until you start painting buttons, right? I then switch to a smaller detailing brush, and I apply the whites into the eye sockets of all the horses. And switching to my smallest brush, I also apply this white into the eye sockets of the riders.
To put on the pupils, I use matte black acrylic paint and with a small brush, I apply it onto the pupils of the horses. The horses have fairly large pupils, so a brush will work just fine for this application. For the eyes of the riders, which are much smaller, I use the sharp end of a toothpick and I apply this onto both eyes. What I do is I apply it onto one eye first and whatever direction that eye is looking at, I try to match it on the other eye. To finish the bases, I use just some simple flocking from Army Painter. This one is a nice green that represents grass. What I do is I use Elmer's glue or this dollar store knockoff. I apply some onto the base and then I spread it out with an old brush. After that, I apply the flocking onto the Elmer's glue and it should stick in place like this. Next for the flag, this flag bearer here will get one of these Russian cavalry flags that I printed out. If you're interested in this flag, go ahead and email me and I will send you a free PDF. What you'll do is you'll fold it in half and then put Elmer's glue on one side in the zigzag pattern like I'm showing here. Then carefully thread it onto the flagpole like this, fold it over and then squeeze it together. While it's drying, you can add wavering to the flag by just crumpling it like this. This gives the flag a nice realistic effect as if it is blowing in the wind. After matte varnishing, these cuirassiers should be all done. Stick around for the second part where I paint up the hussars. For my hussars, I will be painting them up as the Pavlograd Regiment. This is heavily influenced by the movie War and Peace. Here we go! For the distinctive turquoise colored police, I mix three parts magic blue speed paint with one part orc skin. I make sure to mix the colors together real good and then after that I lay it down onto the police. I am careful to stay away from the fur parts which are the entire periphery of the police as well as at the ends of the sleeves. I then use grim black speed paint which I apply onto all the archivers and I'm very careful to stay away from the braids. I want to keep those white. And then I also apply it onto all the stirrups and the shoes of the riders. For the classic dark green of the Russian army, I put absolution green onto the inner vest of the riders. These vests or jackets are also known as dolmens. While painting these, I stay away from any of the white straps and also all the laces on the front of the vest. I want to keep those white for later. Switching back to the turquoise mix that I used earlier on the pelisses, I am going to go ahead and put this on the saddle cloths as well. Now these saddle cloths, especially these ones from Perry Miniatures, has a zigzag pattern all the way around it. What you'll want to do is you'll want to paint the middle turquoise, but work around the lines so that they do not bleed onto the outer periphery. You'll want to leave those white. Next, I use blood red speed paint, and this goes on all the wear patches that are on the elbows of each arm. I next use the same red color and I apply it onto the periphery of the saddle cloths. Using a brush with a pointed tip, slowly work your way around the lines. If you bleed a little bit into the turquoise area, you'll be surprised that it doesn't really show up very much. But be as careful as you can, work your way all the way around, and cover all the areas of the periphery with this blood red speed paint. Once all the speed paint has fully dried, use matte white and slowly feather on the white color onto the laces of the police. This will help set up the background for the color that will come next. This white also goes on the pompons on the Kaiwa caps. Next, I use Zealot Yellow Speed Paint and you wanna make sure that the white has fully dried. Now what you wanna do is just put this yellow right onto the laces that you had painted white earlier. It will seep into the recesses and look really good against the police. And you're also going to use this color on the dolman jackets as well. This color also goes on the braids that are on the Kaiwa caps. And on the sashes around your waists. 
For these Perry miniatures, there are a few pistols and carbines featured on the models. I use hardened leather speed paint to paint the wooden stocks on those guns. There are also a few cartridge boxes present, so I paint those with grim black. These Pavlo Grad Hussars have brass buttons, and for this I use weapon bronze, and with a detailing brush, I go ahead and apply it on all the buttons on their leggings. For the various pistols and carbines that I find, I paint the barrels and the bands, as well as the slide locks, with this gunmetal metallic acrylic paint. I then use leather brown acrylic paint and I apply this onto the chin straps of the non-leader models. The emblems on the front of the Kaiwa caps get greedy gold metallic paint. I then apply strong tone wash onto all the silver and gold parts on all the models. For anything else that was painted with Army Painter Speed Paints, you do not need to apply any washes to. I then switch to dark tone wash and I use this on the fur portions of the police. I'm choosing this wash because it actually allows the white to stand out a little bit more. It doesn't glaze it and make the white look like it's brown. For the eyes of the horses and the riders, I use matte white and with a detailing brush, I apply it into the eye sockets using a sharp tip detailing brush. Now for the riders, since their eyes are a lot smaller, you probably want to go with the smallest brush that you have. This allows you to lay down the whites within the eyes without making it look too splotchy or comical. For the pupils, you'll want to use matte black and I use a detailing brush to apply the pupils onto the horse's eyes. Horses have fairly large eyes with large pupils, so a brush will work just fine here. For the human riders with smaller eyes, I use the sharp tip of a toothpick, I dab it into black paint, and then I apply it onto the eyes. Whichever direction the first eye is looking, I try to make the second eye look in the same direction. Onward to basing. This simple green flocking from Army Painter will do. I use Elmer's glue or a dollar store equivalent and I put it onto the base. Afterwards, I use an old brush and I smear it all over the base and then apply the green flocking right onto the Elmer's glue. It should stick in place and give the base a nice finished look. Afterwards, varnish all your models with mite varnish and your hussars are done. Here are some 360 degree views of the Cuirassier and Hussars all painted up. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you find it helpful in your quest to finish your Napoleonic miniatures. As always, have great fun painting, hobbying, and wargaming, and I'll see you the next time.